Hey guys, Dave Lacalle with Head Games Motorworks. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I am gonna shape the combustion chambers on a Gen 1 Coyote, and uh, we're gonna digitize it. Check it out. All right, we're back in the pouring room and we're gonna redo the combustion chamber. When I say redo, I mean we're gonna rid of any hot spots and we're also gonna reshape the combustion chamber to make the combustion process a little better. Now, what we're gonna do is after the valve job, I like to do it after the valve job, I should say, because there is going to be hot spots just created by the top angle. We're gonna be seeing, seeing these things, so there is less room for issues later on. Before everybody gets their pennies in a bunch, you're gonna see valves in the combustion chamber, and these valves are not to be used. Yes, we ruin them. I get that all the time. Oh my gosh, you're going to ruin the valves. Well, they're actually a tool. So what we do is we take the valve and we put it in the valve refacer and we reface the 45 degree angle and we make this razor sharp. So you could actually almost cut yourself on this because as I said, it's like a razor. And what does that do? Valve in. Now the valve is sitting flush with the combustion chamber, I should say with the seat. And that way we can blend everything in here into the valve job, into the top angle. One thing also to note is that we changed the valve angle. So the 45 degree, or actually this one is a, at a 40 degree angle from the factory. And then we change it over to a 45 degree angle for the aftermarket. Now this head is particularly very sensitive to which angles we use. When I say it's sensitive to the angles that we use, I mean that all valve jobs are not created equal. There is different top angles. There's a 37, a 35, a 38, a 40. There's all these different numbers. You can go on the top angle, and then it would be the consistent 45 degree angle. And then there is a one cut to two cuts below that, and they could be different angles. Not all valve jobs are created equal. So we created a valve job for this head on the flow bench, on and off the bench. We've hurt them before to learn how to get the right CFM that we're looking for, or the right gains we're looking for, or even keep it the same. This head is really, really, really sensitive. Here's what we're going to use to grind it. Now, I'm going to show you this because all of our burrs, we're going to do the half inch uh, super spiral burr, and this is a six inch long length, but uh, you can see in here, this is way shorter than six inch inches of length. I do that because I am going to put a lot of pressure on it, and I don't want to be that far away from the head. So, as you can see, I just cut them down and that way you can get the correct length that you want for whatever job you're working on. Then I'm gonna go back over it with the Head Games 3.8 spur and what this is gonna do is just blend everything in and make it nicey nice so it's easy to sand. skip the step and we are going to use the head games the berber because there is some edges that we can't really get to with any other uh, thickness of the burr so this thing really kind of gets into some angles that you don't normally be able to get into It's important to note that I'm not reshaping anything with that burr. It's not meant for that. It's actually meant for deburring stuff. But as I said, it gets into the tight angles that we can't get into with any other burr. And then we can kind of blend everything in. The CNC, they actually use something that's uh, not that small, but very close to it. So when they do a combustion chamber, it'll all blend in. You 
guys have noticed that I've been grinding with a air grinder instead of the normal electric grinder that I started with. And that is because when doing combustion chambers, this is a front exhaust. So usually um, a lot of grinders, the exhaust comes out here and it's hitting you. Well, instead, this one is a front exhaust, so it's going to blow everything away from you. And you can see your work. So now we just switched over to sanding it. This is a 60 grit. This is on our, I'm going to put a link into it so you can see it on our website. And um, this is a 60 grit. We're going to rough it in with the 60. We'll go back over it with a pad. I'll show you that too. And, uh, and then 120. I'm going to switch to the 3M disc. Now the disc has a little uh, little piece here. And as you can see, it has a very small contact patch, this metal piece. So what I did was I took this rubber. Uh, the rubber usually goes over the whole circumference. And I cut it down so that way this thing is malleable and we can get it into tight spots. You can see this goes here in the corners and that's what I'm using it for. I'm using it, it'll actually straighten out. So if you are a terrible grinder, uh, even if you're good, this is gonna make it so you have less bumps and you can get all the way inside of here, uh, which you're not gonna be able to really do with a cartridge roll. This is a 120 grit and um, so it just kind of blends in naturally. Next up, we got the 3 8 This is also, I'm gonna put a link to it. It's a 3 8 120 grit. and now we're ready to just uh, put a little surface finish on it, make all the lines line up and make it look good. So the last thing is I'm going to hit it with some scotch Bright, and really I'm just taking the glue off of it because cartridge rolls are made from glue and there's a lot of it. So when you're, especially when you're sanding, it's going to come off into it. Now, is this all needed for a CNC? Actually, it's not, it's actually not needed because the CNC doesn't care about surface finish um, as much as you might think. And, uh, but that's just me. I just like to have my stuff looking halfway decent when it leaves the shop. So let's take a look at what we got here. Let's compare what I did. I blended everything into the top cut, as you can see. And did I make the surface finish amazing? No, I did not. I didn't worry about that. But the biggest thing that we're concerned about is the shape. All the shapes here, everything is deburred and unshrouding the valve which is what we're gonna look for. Here's the 45, everything is looking really, really good. Now, if you compare it to what was there, as you can see, it's not round. See how I made it round? And it's not round here. So I made it round and I took away all these hot spots that are around the valve seat and which get worse when we change the top angle. And um, this is gonna help it with getting rid of detonation. Also, I unshroud the valve, as you can see here. This one is rounder and not as shrouded as this one all right so now it's going to go back on the flow bench and it's going to get out of here for cnc we're going to get it digitized it'll come back all cut actually I have like six sets to cut and then we'll be able to do all this process again with the guides the valve job the whole nine yards and we're going to flow the cnc versus this one Unfortunately, guys, we've ran out of room to put our flow benching this one in this episode because of time constraints. But I promise you, you will see it in a future episode. So be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Toodles.